Hello and welcome. Uh, this is a short guide how to make a plant for boiling crude oil to natural gas. Um, I think some people might have a problem with especially this part and getting the carbon dioxide in here and the sliver of naphtha in place so you kind of trap it inside from the oil. So that's what I'm going to explain. I'm also going to explain the, the overall overlay and how it works. But we'll start with this thing. So the first thing you want to construct in, in of this machine is this room. And once it's done, you need an airlock in place here. It doesn't really need to be a simple water airlock like this. Any type of airlock will, will work, but you need to be able to have a different pressure inside here than outside and, and separate the gases. After that, you want to pump in carbon dioxide. So first you just create a vacuum, uh, fairly simple, you just pump out the air, and then you create a uh, pump in carbon dioxide. Now you wanna pump it in to reach about 1000 grams uh, of, of pressure. Uh, other pressures might work, but 1000 grams in here as pressure works fairly well. So the easiest way to achieve this is just fill the whole room with the, the, the pressure you need here. I guess this might be a different optimal uh, pressure, but, but since 1000 gram works and I use it on my other machine, like my other natural gas machine that I got further down in the base, um, it's I haven't seen any reason to try out too many different, different pressures, right? So how do we get this in place of course this is way before we pumped the oil and unfortunately I didn't save any footage from when I was constructing this in the early stages uh, so I don't have any footage to show but I'm gonna show it by painting so the easiest way is once you got that room in place and you got carbon dioxide inside uh, this is how it it kind of looks when it's finished oh all right this one was not, was not supposed to be there, right? So this is how it looks when it's finished. This is not how I construct it to start with. How I construct it to start with is more like this. So this is where the liquid tepidizer will be, right? So you're gonna put it um, here. Uh, what's also important to have is a temp shift plate here. The machine will work without the temp shift plate here, but it will be a lot more spiky temperatures in the carbon dioxide. So place this here while, while you have good access, uh, because later on you won't have any access to this, this part. So the reason I constructed to this to start with is to be able to put a bottle empty up here. Because the place we want the naphtha is here. Now one thing that is important is that any more than 39 kilos, if you dump naphtha here, will actually flow out to the surrounding tiles and we don't want that. And 39 kilos is perfectly fine to get, once you place a cube here, get surface tension to shut off the carbon dioxide we now have in here. Um, so the plastic you can melt, I guess, in two ways. The, the way I did it was just go to an area I already have quite hot, uh, so I have the boiler down up here, right? And and put the storage compactor, you put the max kilo to the desired amount of, of naphtha, and uh, just high, somewhat high priority, and they will place the plastic inside. After you place the plastic, you can just dump it by declicking it, melt it, and later mop it up. If the place where you're constructing, let's go up again through all these things. Uh, if the place where you construct this this machine, uh, if this bottle emptier is the only place it will be, be able to put naphtha, then it will, they will go here, right? And you will have your, your naphtha here. Once the naphtha is in place, you can simply place the cube on top. Uh, since this room will already be filled with carbon dioxide because you pump it in first up to, to the desired amount, you will now have trapped the carbon dioxide here in place. So that's how you start. Now you will have the naphtha here, you will have the carbon dioxide. Um, after that, you can pretty much alter the wall to the desired shapes. You first place this one, so once you've done that, you can remove these. Uh, you kept the atmosphere in here by doing so. And place your, where do I have it here? and place your liquid tepidizer. So now you're pretty much done with this area, right? You will have had the carbon dioxide in place, the sliver of naphtha, and now you can start filling up with oil. After that, you kind of have prepped that room. So once this room is prepped, uh, it doesn't really matter if it's too high uh, concentration of carbon dioxide in here, 
when you start it because the slicksters will take care of it. So once you put the slicksters in place, they will quite fast start converting the carbon dioxide to oil and get the um, density down here. The, the thing that is important about the density in this room is to, once it's up and running, keep it rather low. So I have a gas well um, that I have set to a lower amount of gas flow through because the way Slixus works is they will pretty much co keep consuming uh, carbon dioxide and not converting it to oil until they con consumed enough to get the pressure down to below 250 grams. So if you have really high pressure or a lot of carbon dioxide coming in, they might not ever really convert it to oil, they will just gather it inside them. So you want to keep the pressure down and an easy way to do that is just have an atmo sensor and in my case I have a gas shut off here. So we'll just shut off the, the gas flow if it gets too low pressure. Because the, the cold oil that the slicks just produce through converting carbon dioxide to oil uh, will actually help keeping this oil cool. Now I have an additional cooling measure here with some colder oil flowing through here and that's because in the long run at least uh, for my plants the cold oil from the slicksters have not been enough to keep this at a decent temperature so it had like steadily but very slowly ticked up right so i just added that little extra cooling cooling measurements so uh the way uh, i set out the optimization for for my liquid tepidizer to work i've seen some 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 ways where they just connected it to a, a temperature shut off in, in the natural gas, but I think this is an easy way to get a good control. It's this system. So you can ignore this for now. This is just an extra safety measurement where it will sh shut off if the oil becomes too low, because if the oil goes below here, this thing might fail. Um, but it should never, as long as you keep a balance between uh, inflow and outflow of carbon dioxide and, and oil, since the ratio is one to one, it, it won't really change um, the, the level of oil in here. So how this works is just this, this circulation that I use a lot with liquid tepidizers. So you see it goes up here, down here. In this case I have 12 second downtime and can I click this? 5 seconds uptime. And you can just experiment with this to see that you have a somewhat decent temperature in here. So you see it range between about like 1400 degrees and 800 degrees, which is enough for, for boiling temperature here. So once you got this room in place, you pump, you first got the, the carbon dioxide in here, then you dropped your naphtha down here. Uh, did I talk about the second way you could do it? You could of course just place the storage compactor right here and then empty it, get the liquid tepidizer running and melt it in place. I might have said that earlier in the video, in that case, excuse me for saying it twice, but that's the second way you can probably do it. Now, after you got that in place, you can set up the rest of the rooms. And first of all, it's this chamber. Uh, this chamber is to cool down the natural gas, so the pump over here does not get fried. Uh, and part of that job, or a big part of that job, will actually be done by the oil you pump into it. So I have the oil pumped up through here, down to a um, liquid valve. So I have the liquid valve set here at the exact same level I, as I have the gas inflow, that way the, the, this level of oil will be stable. Now he, in here I have it pumped through in, in high uh, thermal conductivity pipes. Now if you have enough wolframite to make tungsten for all of this by using a granulator for all of these pipes, that's excellent. I do, didn't, I actually didn't even have enough wolframite. So, so this is actually made in, in normal igneous rock. But it, it works, it's enough, so you don't really have to worry if you don't have enough wood for mitre tungsten, you just need to make this chamber a bit longer. So the, the important part is to keep have it long enough so that the natural gas gets to cool down. You see it goes in at about 37 degrees and it goes out at 100 degrees. So it's also, it serves two purposes. You cool down the natural gas and you actually preheat the oil which makes it easier to boil down here. Uh, because this this part is, is where the magic happens. Uh, I have some extra cooling here, but it's not really needed. It's just that I was producing really, really cold oxygen uh, over here and needed to, to get it up to room temperatures. Uh, so I just thought I added that as an extra cooling system. But the important part is just to get the temperature decently down. I, I could probably run a bit higher temperature here, so I probably have a bit more cooling than I need in here. Uh, this part is to boil... Um, 
uh, polluted water into uh, uh, water and it has a dual purpose uh, it's of course nice to be able to use the machine for two things but it also helps by transferring some of the heat here helps cooling down the natural gas so what i did to, to actually be able to uh, boil as much polluted oxygen as possible is these this part of the pipe is actually absolute and that is because here i don't want to i want to start losing temperature of the natural gas about here to transfer as much of the heat up here instead to be able to maximize the amount of uh, polluted water I can boil. And the important thing here is pretty much to keep the temperature somewhat high in this room because if you have too much cooling, so I have a cooling loop here, a kind of minimal one, but if you have too much cooling here, uh, what will happen is um, that it's less effective. So you kind of want to keep it that I should probably get try to get temperature up even a bit more in here, right? Uh, and a way to separate the polluted uh, water that you put in here from where it turns to, to water on the other side. Um, I think that's about everything. Yeah, also empty out this area, create a vacuum before you start up the machine. I didn't uh, and had a lot of oxygen in here when I started the machine and what happens is it kind of stops the flow through of the natural gas. So I actually had to stop the machine, empty out all the oxygen and then start up the machine again. So it, it probably would have pushed out the oxygen in the end, but it really slows up the start. Uh, the different layouts overlays are like this. Here I pump in the, the carbon dioxide uh, and here I pump out the, the natural gas. Uh, there's no real reason to have more than 500 grams flow through of this machine or try to pressure it up higher unless you actually put two pumps in here because a pump can only pump out 500 grams a second. So if you want to see if you can get more out of this machine, you need two pumps here. Otherwise it won't just cope, cope. you will just have pressure building up in this area. Um, the electric grid is fairly simple. It's just electric for the different parts. And you can see this one shutting on and off. Um, so that's, that's, that's not really hard to make. You have to make it in this direction because if you make it like reversed in the other direction uh, so that the electricity would be coming in from here, the electric wire would actually get fried in here. So it's important to have like this, this that it comes in from this side. So you have this direction of the machine. Uh, optimization fairly simple all of this is pretty much just because I thought it would be really neat with a control room where I could shut off all the machines uh, by small buttons up here so it's not really needed uh, the only thing that's really needed over here is this part uh, and that it, this one could just as well be connected straight down this is just connected to the hot to a hydro sensor uh, and this one is connected to another thing where I if, if the temperature gets too high, I, it just switch where the oil is going so I, I get the oil to flow through here when I get too high temperatures. But if I don't have too high temperatures, uh, I, will I, I don't use the oil for cooling uh, in this section. So that, that part you can ignore. Anything else? Yeah, this little thing here is because the temperature were actually running a bit too low for my slickster to have a really nice temperature in here. So what I did was I added a little, this is just sandstone. But it's enough. So I have a sandstone tile here letting through some of the heat. And then I use the temp shift place plus actually an automated wire because they're really good terminal conductor conductors to even out the temperature here around where my slickstas live. It's just to make a really nice living area for my slickstas. But it's not really needed for the machine to work. It works anyway. I don't know in the long run if it actually could uh, turn so cool in here that the slickstas will die. So you just keep an eye on the temperature. If you don't have this set up, just keep an eye on the, uh, uh, a bit of an eye on the temperature of the slickstas. Uh, I think that's everything. If you have uh, any questions, uh, did I show the liquid? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, so if you have any questions, just post them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Hopefully, got, I think this is the part that people really have problem with. The rest is probably not as difficult. Uh, Alright, hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers!